welcome back to my channel for a sit down chatty more reflective type of video i've done one of these videos once before i think it was two years ago when i had just turned 25 and so i thought it would be kind of fun just as a way to kind of recap and look back on this to make a video of 25 life lessons i've learned by the age of 25. so i started just kind of creating a list and I've come to 27 things I've learned by the age of 27, just turned 27 about a month ago, probably by the time this video is coming out. Some of them are a little bit more deep and reflective and like philosophical perhaps. And some are way more practical, like whether that's like financial or things I learned buying a house or things I've learned being self-employed. So a, a wide array of things and in no particular order, but I am excited to get into this list with you. I hope that all these things make sense when I read them back. I've just been adding to the list as like something comes to mind over the last week or so. So here's what we got. One, generosity is good for the soul. I've also learned this year, we live in a culture so underexposed to generosity that people kind of can't comprehend sometimes why you would give without the intention of receiving something in return. I get it. I get we live in this this culture to where we're afraid of things being toxic or us being taken advantage of. And yes, it is important to protect your space, your peace. But I feel like we've swung so far in one direction yeah. that people are kind of concerned and shocked when you have a generous heart posture that isn't looking to get something in return. I did a car chat recently about being grumpy and hormonal and about how I realized like forcing myself to take time out of my day to do things for other people resets my brain more than sometimes even therapy can. I think being generous is a really great way to reframe your own life. And that's something I want to incorporate more of moving forward in my life as I continue to grow up and grow older and mature. Two, Stress really does affect physical health. I'm learning that more and more and more, especially in my autoimmune journey, especially learning about my lupus and all sorts of things. As you can see, I've had the last couple months a very visible indication to how stressed I am because your skin is an organ and your organ interplays with your body. And it's just been really interesting to pay close attention because I've had a physical marker. We all know that I really started to develop my lupus in the most stressful years of my life. And that's when all the symptoms became unmanageable. And since then, it's kind of ebbed and flowed just with how much I'm doing in my day to day, um, how much I'm juggling in addition to normal life and work in terms of, you know, wedding planning, or we've had some more personal stressful things happening within our families and things of the sort. It has really so correlated with my physical health. So that's just been a lesson that I've learned and that I will need to learn how to navigate, but it has been proven for sure for me over the last few years. Okay, here's a practical one. If you're buying a house, do not use the inspector that your real estate agent suggests. Oftentimes, real estate agents are looking to close the deal. They're looking to get their commission check. They're looking for it to be as easy as possible. They love to work with inspectors that don't bring up a ton of issues and that are just like fast and quick and easy to work with. If you use the inspector that your real estate agent brings to you, they could miss a lot of really big issues. We've learned that lesson very much the hard way within this last year. I won't say too much about it, except for if you're buying a house, get your own inspector, maybe get several types of inspectors. Like for example, we haven't had any issues with our pool, but we have a pool. You can have an inspector that specializes in pools. Come and check all the pool equipment and things of the sort, because if that breaks, it's quite expensive. So just get your own inspector if you're buying a house. I wish we would have known that. I honestly, if I was rebuying a house, would have someone come and look for things like mold. I would have someone come and look for things like EMF. I would have I would have people come look for all the healthy aspects of buying a house too, because you're living in the space and it affects so many realms of your health. Very importantly, I have really learned by my 27th year of life what it feels like to actually be in love and actually be loved by a partner. I hadn't really experienced that before. I, I've learned what it feels like to be cherished and to be pursued. And most importantly, to be fully accepted as yourself, to not feel like you need to earn someone's love by acting a certain way or doing certain things for them and just it be unconditional. And I do want to say, I know I'm very newly in this relationship. It's only been two years and some change and life will get hard and throw us curveballs, but I'm allowed for the first time in my life to like have grumpy days and for it to be okay because my value isn't diminished by that 
in my partner's eyes. And that has been really freeing. I feel like I've stepped into this new confidence. I have less of a need or a desire to please other people. Like it's helped my people pleasing tendencies, I think, because I'm like, oh, I can be valuable as I am. You know, I don't need to change all these things about myself to make other people like me, to make other people pleased. And it's just kind of like seeped into other realms of my life, which I have very much appreciated. Next, I feel like I've probably said this one before, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm continuing to learn that it is okay to change your mind. In fact, I think it is like a very small-minded, closed-minded way to live to say, this is my choice, this is what I believe, this is what I'm doing, whatever that might be, and never, ever, ever have an open mind to maybe considering something else or hearing another person's perspective or point of view. I think it shows maturity, honestly, to say, you know, I felt this way at this time, but since then I've learned these lessons. I've heard these perspectives. I have realized that I was incorrect about these things. And because of that, I'm going to put down my ego and say, I was wrong and I'm gonna try this other thing. And I actually think that that is like one of the most powerful, profound things you can do is to say, I'm gonna try something else. I changed my mind. I thought I really wanted this. Maybe I don't. Okay, I learned this this year. Life is better with one day a week unplugged. I know that that is a luxury, but also if you're a Christian, you hear all the time about how God intended for us to have a Sabbath and what that looks like and how we were built to have one day of rest and how it is an act of worship and it is actually required of us. I heard all these things. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a lot to do. It wasn't until really moving here in the last few months, honestly, that I've been very strict about taking one day a week fully unplugged. And sometimes that means me saying no to a couple things during the week to be able to get ahead enough to feel like I can fully unplug one day. But just being able to have a kind of guilt-free one day off has really changed my brain. Like I have felt more in balance and I have felt healthier and I have felt like a more peaceful, present person. If you are curious about that, there's two books that I really recommend. The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry touches on the concept of taking a day off a week. And I think even if you're not religious, like it's kind of built into our rhythm. Um, I think there's psychological benefits beyond religious reasons to take a day off a week. Uh, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and To Hell with the Hustle are two amazing books. They are both Christian based. So throwing that out there. Okay. I've learned you don't have to be in your teens or early 20s to learn something new, to start school, to consider changing career paths entirely. It is never too late. And I also feel like that's a cliche that we hear a lot, even starting culinary school for me right now, which culinary class, culinary class at a culinary school, I'm not in a degree program, so I don't know how to <laughs> classify the name of it. But there are some people in my class that are literally 70 years old that said, you know, I finally retired and I finished my career and I have always wanted to do this. And I've just decided it's never too late to learn new things. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> you have the whole world ahead of you when you're young. So it feels more possible to like try something out and you feel a little more set in your ways with age. I mean, I'm still young, so I can't really speak on that, but it's extra like sick. That's awesome that you're doing that the older you get when you try something new. Okay, I've learned this year that for me at least, something about the beach I can physically feel reset my nervous system. It's been a huge benefit to living here. The more in tune I get with my body, this is about to sound so like crunchy woo woo, but I can physically feel something shift in my like, I literally think it's my nervous system. I feel like the fresh air the the grounding people say where your feet are in the earth this the sensory experiences of the sand and the like the white noise the repetitive white noise of the waves seeing blue i think that that is literally proven to reset your nervous system seeing blues and greens all of that together i feel like a good 25 percent better after sitting at the beach for like 40 minutes mentally and physically sometimes it's been a nice little benefit to moving here that um, I didn't necessarily foresee. Okay, I've learned this last year, 
hosting is like the most rewarding thing for me. I've always heard about like spiritual gifts and I've always been like, I don't really know what my spiritual gift would be. Like I'm good at communication, I guess, I don't know. But I think this last year I've really kind of stepped into maybe my spiritual gift and like what I can bring to people is hospitality and like creating an environment and a space to bring people together for community and for connection and just for like kind of an escape from like the stresses of life is so rewarding and like my soul craves that. I want to do that more and more and more. We've started reaching out to like our church and we're like, hey, groups beyond us. If you have like a new young parents group that needs a spot to meet or like the church staff that needs a spot to have a dinner, like we wanna host. Like both Jordi and I feel very aligned on that. And that's been something that I'm excited to explore more. Like I mentioned this in a Q and A before, I was really inspired by this couple called the Beth Keys. We got to go to their house and their whole life feels built around being able to have the space and the resources and the time to host people. Whether that is like having dinners with like 30 people or having a space to where a family who might be struggling can live for three months while they get their feet back on the ground. That's something that I want to build. I want to build a life to where I can do that more and more and more and in a greater capacity and in different ways and for more types of people. And I feel really called to that. So that's something I've learned. I've learned maybe it's a good idea to share less. And this is gonna sound conflicting with a thing I'm gonna mention later, but I just mean in terms of safety. I'm the type of person that I am so okay to overshare so many things, like things I'm struggling with, things I'm feeling, physical things, gross things about me. Like, I don't care. I will share it. I don't know why it's like hard to embarrass me in that sense, but I do wish that I had been more mindful growing up on the internet, sharing things that could potentially affect my safety, especially now, you know, like owning a home and like having a traveling spouse who will be gone and like not being in an apartment building. So many things I'm like, ooh, one day I'm gonna have kids and like I worry about their safety. I just wish I had shared less. I just wish I was more mindful. Oh, good. Uh, okay, I am over elaborating on all of these life lessons and I've hardly gotten through them and I've already talked for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna start going a little bit faster. Next, just fun fact, I did not know this until this year. You can file public records requests. Maybe that's something you already knew, but you can like go to your you know, city hall and pay $5 and file a request. Like we needed to get mail that was sent to someone else for something and you could just get it, which is crazy. I had no idea. I feel like that's a bad idea that that's a thing, but I mean, I get it. This is something that is helpful for me to keep in mind that I've learned. Voicing your needs and desires is actually kinder to the people around you instead of putting the mental burden on them of trying to figure it out and trying to guess what you actually might want or need. I grew up in a family culture that is very much like, whatever you want, no, whatever you want, you decide, you decide, what do you want? And like, nobody will say what they actually want. And then it's kind of like, well, okay, now I need to play the guessing game of like, what do you actually want? Cause I would hate to like decide that we're all gonna do something and then have you secretly hate being there. And there's a way to do it too of like, I would love this, um, but I really also am okay if we do something else, you know? Okay, I've learned maybe nine plus hours of sleep is actually what I need. And I actually saw a study the other day, I can't cite where it was from, but I think it was like an actual study, not just like a clickbait title, that uh, the whole concept of like needing eight hours a day was actually built off of men's circadian rhythm and that women actually might require more sleep than that. But as I've been tracking my sleep in the last year, I get much higher scores and much better metrics when I aim to sleep nine hours a night. I don't always get that, but when I aim for that, I do feel better the next day. This is what's going to seemingly contradict my I wish I had shared less in terms of safety. But when you share something vulnerable, I feel like, in my experience, it gives you the power over it. When something feels like embarrassing or shameful or vulnerable, and you like kind of keep it a secret, you're so welcome to. People have a right to their privacy and you, you don't have to share anything with anyone. But for me, I think the reason that I overshare and the reason that I don't often get embarrassed is because I take ownership in sharing the things that could be vulnerable or embarrassing. And it feels like for me, then I have power over it. It is me presenting it to the world instead of me trying to like hide something and feeling scared that someone might notice it or point it out or ask me about it. I'm just like owning it. 
Okay, I've learned that vitamin C, probiotics, and magnesium for me are kind of like the little trinity of things that really make a difference. Vitamin C both orally and on my skin. Probiotics are like the most important thing and then taking magnesium has really helped for me getting good sleep and moving things along in my system, maybe even more so than fiber to be honest. But those are the three that I think I will always make sure to rebuy and take every single day as I've experimented a little bit more with my like supplement journey. Something that I feel like I've actually learned this year is you don't need to try to win everybody over. That's an impossible task. What you do need to do is like be kind and then move along. We could take this in several different ways. I used to take it personally. If we had like a server at a restaurant that seemed like they were in a bad mood or like didn't like me, it was always my goal to be like, by the end of this dinner, I will get them to smile and I will get them to like feel like they enjoy being here, which in some ways it's like, yeah, it's nice to care about like someone wanting to have a good day. But in other ways, it could be like a pride ego thing of like, no, 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 you will enjoy being here. And like, you don't need to do that. You can be nice and it doesn't reflect on you and move along. Or we could take that on a greater scale of like sharing your life on the internet. I'm going to say this so blatantly. There's a good few hundred people that hate me. <laughs> and I used to like lay awake at night being like, man, I, I wish I could just sit down with them and like have a conversation and like, you know, actually get to know them and try my best to win them over. But now I'm like, that's an impossible task. I don't need to waste my mental and emotional energy on that. I can just be nice and move along. Okay, self-employed tip. You don't need to hold too tightly to your money that actually hinders you. You have a better chance of growth and improving things if you let go of some of your income and allocate that to hiring other people to help you do the job. Oftentimes the other people that you hire are more experienced than you and can actually help you produce a better product. I've learned this from my dad, a small little side story. I said I wasn't gonna over articulate and here I am. This is gonna be a long chatty video, so sorry. My dad and someone he, know, he, he knew started a similar business at the same time, which was striping parking lots in the middle of the night. My dad had the mentality of, I'm going to, instead of trying to pocket all this money, I'm gonna try to hire out people, give them jobs, and like grow this, obviously bigger financial risk. He ended up growing a company that is 100 employees, now works a few days a week and is set. His other friend never, ever, ever wanted to spend the money hiring someone out and is still in his like now, you know, 30 years later age going out and striping the parking lots by himself. Yes, I think it's risky to feel like you're spending money instead of keeping it, but I do think that it is healthier and it's really awesome to provide people with job opportunities. It's like a win, 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 win. And so that's something that I have continued to learn. And I feel like I feel pretty confident in this year. Okay, here's another thing. I think a lot about obviously sharing, how much I share, what I share, all this sort of thing, um, because that is what my job is, is sharing myself. Um, and I have realized this year that when you undershare, you have more room for incorrect assumptions. People are gonna try to fill in the blanks, usually with their own experiences, which oftentimes is incorrect. And so then they have a narrative of you in their mind that is false. But oversharing, you lose privacy. And that is something that I have started to value more and more with age. So that's just a lesson that I've learned. There's no right or wrong way. There's a win-lose no matter what you choose. That's just a lesson. Okay, I've learned it can take your microbiome a year to fully recover from one round of antibiotics. I learned that during my hospital stay when I was on intense IV antibiotics for days because of a MRSA infection. This is why I'm like so hyper fixated on my microbiome and why I work with a probiotic company so frequently. It affects everything and antibiotics wrecked me. I've learned this year that starting over, though it's scary, moving somewhere new, whatever, does give you a chance to build a very intentional community. I feel like when you are in the area that you like were raised in or whatever, you have so many different friends from so many different phases of life. It, it can feel just more like disjointed. When you move somewhere new, it's cool to be able to build a new community that feels cohesive and that feels like everybody knows each other and that you can like host a big hang and everybody feels comfortable. I don't know. I was obviously intimidated to move and I've just realized that it's actually been really awesome. And I've loved the chance to like plug in to a new community and like build a new community. 
your brain really does change when you protect it from what you consume. I have implemented a lot more boundaries with what I consume. I don't think it's necessarily been good for my job because maybe I've been online less which sometimes I kick myself over because I'm like, you're not as like connected to people. You're not responding to as many things. And I would like to be better about that. But I've just tried an experiment of like really implementing a lot of boundaries with what I put into my brain and what I read and what like feedback I take and how often I take it and all these sorts of things. It has actually done so much for my anxiety. Like I have felt so much more at peace. I haven't, I haven't been struggling as much with anxiety since I've done that. And that has been incredible. Starting the morning with some sort of connection totally changes the flow of the day for me. I have loved doing this. Jordy and I have a coffee time every morning where it's just 20 minutes of connecting. How is your day looking? What are your intentions for today? How are you feeling? How did you sleep? All that sort of stuff. It just is nice to not wake straight up and like go into work or wake straight up and like start scrolling your phone, but like connecting with someone real. Okay, a couple uh, more practical things. I've learned Pilates might be the best workout, at least for me. I am currently so sore from a Pilates class I took two days ago. And for me, building strength and protecting my joints, I've loved it. I've looked so forward to it. So I'm excited to find a workout that I actually feel like I can stick to and I'm excited about. Next, I learned this year, you can essentially like rent solar panels from a solar company for cheaper than your electrical bill. I don't know how this changes state to state, but just some numbers. Our energy bill here in California is insane. It is literally like six to seven hundred dollars a month. So we were going to get solar and I found that like we got several quotes from several companies. We're going to rent solar panels for 25 years and it's going to generate the same amount of energy that we have been using monthly and instead of paying our electric company six seven hundred dollars a month for the energy we're using we're renting these panels for 218 dollars a month that they install that they maintain that they upkeep and it does increase a little percent every single year but still year 25 is going to be cheaper than what we're paying right now for our energy every single month and i didn't know that was an option i was like solar panels sound great but like so expensive to buy them. I'll keep you all updated if, if I still like it after we get them installed, but I did not know that was an option. So super cool. It's okay to let loose a little. I have finally started letting loose for the first time in my life. I have been so strict about everything that I do. Like I've totally had a stick up my butt in so many ways. I'm kind of unenjoyable in that way. And I've just let myself be more enjoyable. And I've realized that being strict about everything in life doesn't make you better than everyone else. Small thing, drinking quality water has totally made a difference. The more I've learned about like water quality, uh, the more I've cared about it, but also just like having good water that tastes good. I've drank so much more and I have felt so much better. We have awful, 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 awful water here in San Diego. I think it's rated as like the worst in the country because we get it from the Colorado River and it's like the last stop on the Colorado River. So, so much has seeped into it by that point. So we've started, like we have this big five gallon thing that we go fill up with alkaline water that is from like a natural, what do you, what is it called? An aqua four, aqua, aqua four is a chapstick. Like a natural well that's just been part of our weekly routine and has made, made a huge difference in how I feel and how much water I drink. And lastly, 27th thing that I've learned this year is it is so much easier to lean on God when you feel like you need to, like when you feel like life is hard and like when you're going through stuff. And it takes a lot of intentionality and discipline to continue to build a relationship with him during more joyful seasons, at least in my experience. I was going through hard stuff for a few years and it felt really easy to just lean on God. And now that I feel like a lot of sweet things are happening, it's easier to kind of let that slip. I could do more and I could do better. So that's just me. And I don't talk about faith a ton over here because I don't want it to be alienating to people who believe differently, but that is something that I've learned. And so I will share. That is it. Those are 27 things I've learned by the age of 27, but I love y'all. I love growing up with you. Some of you guys have been here literally since I started my channel at 18 and wow, you have seen some stuff. You have seen me when my voice sounded totally different and when I was just a hyper little teenager still auditioning for Disney shows and would have kind of that energy and that personality. Perfect timing, the construction's starting back up. So all that to say, I love you. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot to me. I hope you'll have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.